Hello, hello beautiful people, how are you? It's Monday and as promised, every Monday I come in here to talk to you about mental health, about happiness, about personal development and growth. So today, today's topic, it's not going to be out of the blue topic, I guess. It's topic well, um, well known to everyone. A little bit of love, a little bit of fear, a little bit of emotions. Today we're going to talk about intuition and a lot more. But um, before I go there, let me just introduce myself. So my name is Sylvia Kuchena. I'm psychotherapist, author and and founder of Mental Health Clinic, Horizon Mental Health Clinic in Limerick City. So that's me, that's my roles. Um, not only, but the main ones, <laughs> the, the ones I want you to know. Um, so, fear. What is fear? Like, if we would just look at fear, what is it? Because it has a huge power and it holds us back Hugely. So, what is about that fear that it holds us back and yet we don't want it, but we are find it too hard to get rid of it? Fear is, I have actually, um, <laughs> I was making dinner and I was making my notes for today. So, fear is this, it's this directed energy. And you got to redirect it for you to feel more empowered, to feel more strong. But if you would just stay with that, that fear is a misdirected energy. It's not from, like, from your heart. It's all from your mind. Because as we know, and as, as I did talk to you about different layers of your psyche, there is consciousness, subconsciousness, unconsciousness, and your fear is not conscious. It comes from your subconsciousness because whatever you're telling yourself, it's consciously, it's being redirected to your subconscious, and that becomes your reality. So this is very important, right? That you go, you take this back and start consciously making a decisions about fear and what is going, what is fear for you. So if you would look at, let's say, fear itself versus love. So let's say if you would act out of your fear, right, how differently you would act out if you would act out of love. So fear would be like, no, I can't do this. No, this is too, I'm too afraid of being judged. I'm too afraid of being too exposed. I'm too afraid of being too visible. What if people will reject me? This is fear. And this is your consciousness telling you this. And then your subconscious is taking this oh, and takes it as truth. So that will become your reality. But if you redirect your fear and change it over love and then stay with the energy of love, what would be your reaction? If you would, let's say, give that love to yourself and to others, if you would speak with love, what would the message be? I might not be the best, but yet... Someone might need to hear it. Maybe someone needs to hear this message. Maybe I'm going to help one person and that is going to be enough. So what I'm going to be visible if that's what it requires me to do in order to get this message across, then why not? If someone's going to judge me, this is not going to be a reflection on me. And if it is, then I need to look at this inside me, like maybe this is happening, what really I was afraid of. So how can I deal with it? 
You see, every person that you will meet is going to be your teacher. You can learn from other people, but your react, but no one in general, no one can, um, no one can take any power over you. This is your life. So unless you give something a power, then yes, it's going to be holding the power over you. But let's say if something really bad is happening or like something is really making you really, really sorry and then and suffering, it's your reaction that matters. Who are you when in that suffering? Who are you? Who you want to be? Where are you directing your energy? To the fear or to love? Remember, what you given out, this is exactly what you're going to receive. How about anger? Another emotion. And again, let's look at anger versus love. If you're going, let's say someone really made you angry, and again, I don't believe someone is able to make you angry, you make yourself angry by your, your own reactions to the situation. But, coming back to yourself, if you would look at anger and if you would look at love, how differently you could react. A situation happened, yes, you got upset, you got hurt. And then you're showing anger. You're being, you're being angry, you're making maybe not nice comments, and you're... <sighs> okay. Right. How can you act differently? How can, how, what would you, what would your reaction be if you act with love? Would it be any different? And then being jealous. So many of you might feel jealousy and then they're afraid of being that. They don't allow, if you don't allow yourself to be jealous. But if you, and then we create resentment and then we create all other negative, really toxic emotions. How would you react if you would show love? Yes, you would acknowledge your jealousy, but then on the other hand, you would say, you know what? If they are, if they are the reflection of who I am, then this is my calling. This is what I supposed to be, or who, this is who I supposed to be. Do not take your power away from you. The minute you will hold your ground, the minute you will be um, working on your self-awareness, you will become much more stronger in yourself. In yourself. But the minute you're going to give your power away, you're going to feel into anger, fear, your power is out the window. You will not feel powerful if you're going to feed into the fear. <sighs> okay, let me give you another example. And this is going to be an example of my practice. How I'm working. Coffee first. <laughs> I love my coffee. Um, if I, let's say, if I... I'm going to give you an example how I work with people, okay? If I would just, the principle of life that I am a reflection of people and people are a reflection of me, there is no separateness, right? And my clients are my teachers and if that is my approach, which is this, my approach of me having, being therapist, when someone sits in front of me and tells me, this happens to me, that happened to me, I 
been traumatized this way, and by the way, loads of people don't even know that they carry all this trauma inside them. That comes out through therapy, and I'm like, oh, I didn't know that was trauma, but now it makes sense. Yes, but if someone would start to open up to me and would tell me all the trauma that happened, let's say in the childhood, I don't start to pity that person and I do not start to feel sorry for them. Do you know why? Because if I would do that, that's not love. This is not a line. Like pity somebody and feeling sorry for them is not equal to love. I wouldn't show them um, love. Like I wouldn't be able to receive what they're telling me with loving energy. Rather than empowering them and make them feel stronger, I would actually do the opposite. The minute I start to pity somebody, I'm taking their power away. I'm like, hmm, you be there, feel small, feel sorry for yourself, you got my permission, and there is no change, there is no movement. Nothing is really happening. If I would do that. But as I said, this is not how I work with my people. I am able to show them understanding. I am able to show them compassion. Big one. I'm able to hear them out. Show understanding. But accepting them for who they are and what happened. I'm not feeling sorry at the same time. I feel compassionate. I can care about this person. But it's all true love. Not about self-destructive energy. And like, yeah. This is not how you want to empower people. The minute you want to empower them, you, you, if people are coming to me to heal, I need to be strong in myself and be able to hold myself and them at the same time, but not feeling sorry for them or pity them. Because that would not help them heal. This is not how the healing takes place. Healing is true love, acceptance, understanding. Because that will show people they can be and feel whatever it had been and yet go and try something different, something new, try to heal. That will show them their own power within them. Does that make sense? Love is our priority. Love should be our priority. This is how we heal. There is no bigger energy in this universe than love. Love is the highest, highest energy and it has huge power of healing. And that's the principle I'm actually using when I'm working with my clients. I'm, he I'm helping people by empowering them. I'm not becoming their mothers because Mothers, the role of mother, if you would look at the archetype, is about fixing, but it's not about empowering. And I don't want to fix somebody, because they're not coming to me to, be, to get fixed. They want to feel more power, they want to feel stronger, they want to feel like they can own their own life. So for me, to comply with duty, I'm going to do it, but true love. Not true pity and not true feeling sorry for somebody else. <sighs> okay. I'm looking at my notes because, as I said, I was making my notes about this masterclass. Well, not masterclass, about this life. Um, another message that I want to take you from this video is that we need to slow down. We really need to slow down. We're living in the 21st century and this is very, we're living in a very 
fast paced life. Everything is non-stop. It's going. It's constant. And when we are so much in it, we don't have time to slow down. And we don't slow down. We're becoming more in our heads, not in our body. Like how many of you is actually paying attention to your own body? Like how many of you is aware of your own body? Not unless you're sick, to be honest. Like we don't pay attention to our body unless there's something wrong with it. Like, oh, now I need to pay attention. And this is exactly why people are getting sick, by the way. If you're not going, you know, like this is getting a flu or something, that is making you to slow down. This is forcing you to slow down and start paying attention to yourself, to your body. Not only being in your head and do, 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 do. Because that creates loads, like a um, huge disconnection between you, your mind, and your soul. You got, your job is to get your mind and your soul work together. It needs to go, it needs to cooperate. No, it can't go like this because it's like, whole, nothing. Want work. It's like imagine you have a car and then two front wheels at the mind. Yeah, going to work. Or maybe differently, actually. Not the wheels. I'm going to give you a car with perfect, lovely engine. And that, let's say, it's going to be your mind. Without wheels, are you going to go anywhere? Nowhere. <laughs> so this is why you need your body. This is why you need your mind and your body to cooperate, to work together, it needs to become one. And that's your job. Being more aware, conscious, and being aware of yourself. When we are so run, like when we are running away like from life, really, in order to make a living or we are forgetting about something really important here. We are forgetting that we are very spiritual creatures. When you are all in your head, overthinking, analyzing, keep everything logic, that creates huge disconnection from your heart, from your desires, from you being creative, from your imagination, from your intuition. And when the bigger disconnection, the more unhappy you actually are. You become more unhappy, anxious, depressed. Because there is this connection. You have lost who you are. You don't have no idea anymore. What's your life? Why are you here? Like, what is the point of me being here if I don't know who I am? Like, and again, there is no love because usually we don't believe then. When we are so much in the head, we don't believe that we are lovable. And the minute there is like an ugly emotion comes in, we run away with the, oh, don't want it. Because when we are so much in the logic, we are too afraid to feel anything. And when that happens, you're suffering. If that is happening, you are suffering. But life is not about suffering. Life is about giving and receiving. But for us, enable to be, enable to, to receive and to give, we need to slow down. You need to reconnect with yourself. You really need to stay with yourself. Start feeling yourself. Your intuition? What is intuition? Intuition is the message, is the conversation between you and the God. And you name it. If you don't believe in God, you, you name it the universe, higher power, you name it. But your intuition is the connection with something much higher. And you've got to listen. But the only how you can listen to that it's when you actually slow down. 
make yourself time to meditate, make yourself time to spend some time in nature and don't think about the next thing you're going to do. When you're walking, be at that walk, enjoy it. Stop, run away from yourself. Stop, run away from who you are or who you meant to be. Stop, feed into the fear because that is, the, the energy is a, not where it should be. It's going not in the right direction. But it's your job to bring it back, take control, start feeding into love. Connect, stay with yourself, slow down. That is your job. If you want to be happy, fulfilled, if you want to become whole, much stronger, and this is exactly what you need to do. Slow down. <sighs> what else do I have here? Um... Okay, yes, I did say it, that um, we need to slow down and the law of life is actually to forgive and to receive. And if you want to receive love if you from a romantic relationship, if you want to receive money, friendships, I don't know, like, you name it, you got to slow down and think why you want those things. Make a meaning to those things. If it's meaningless, how it's meant to come to you? It won't. Because, like, I don't want to go there. Like, she is or he's not going to look after me. I, why would I want to go there? But when you're full of love, it's like, yay, let's go there. We got all of this twisted. Why do we believe that suffering, pain, depression, feeling anxious all of the time, overthinking things, living in the fear is normal? Why did we normalize that? Like, that's not normal. Normal is love and being fulfilled and happy and healthy and wealthy. Like You name it again, like what you want in your life. But that is normal. Why did we normalize the suffering and the pain and never normalize the good things? I did say it before that when we overthink things and when we stay within very negative thinking, it's very easy to do it to create and to be in a, and think very negatively. But it's very hard and it's very difficult to live with that. But when you make a little bit of effort and start making a positive change and start thinking positively, yes, at the beginning it's going to be difficult to stay in that positive mindset, but then it's so easy to live with that. So there's your choice. That's your choice. What do you want to do? How do you want your life to look like? Do you want to be happy and fulfilled and that's going to be your norm? Or are you going to normalize still pain, suffering and fear? What is going to be your normal? That's up to you. Not about somebody else, not about life circumstances, because you attract what you're, what you're thinking about. So you are creating your reality. Nobody else does that for you, only you. This is why, this is another reason why it's so important actually for you to stay connected with yourself. Connect with your heart, connect with your gut feelings, listen to these messages, meditate. And when someone tells me, oh, meditate doesn't work, all what I'm hearing is, this is ego talk. This is ego. Like, ego will never want you to do something that is, require your work. Like, when, some, when someone says to me, no, this is too hard, this is too difficult. 
then so is it not too difficult to have a life and being in the life very unhappy? What's more difficult? To put an effort and make something work for you, even especially when you know it's good. I'm like, nah, that's too much work required. I'm not going to do it. So then don't complain that you're unhappy or the life doesn't work for you. If you're not willing to do the work, you have, if you are gifted, you got everything that you need to create the life you want and deserve. Stop normalizing what is not normal. Stop not, stop normalizing fear. Stop normalizing suffering. That is not normal. This is not what life is about. Life meant to be good.